Let's talk about fonts on Linux. Or more specifically, in this video, I'm going to be going over how to install fonts, how to manage your fonts, how to set a default font, how to preview fonts. And working with fonts on Linux is not that difficult, but if you've never done it before, there are a couple of things that might be tricky. And there are a lot of graphical programs out there that you can use to manage your fonts. But honestly, working with fonts from the command line is so simple that I'm just going to be going over that today because I think that using the terminal, at least when working with fonts, is actually easier than using a graphical program. So that's what I'm going to teach you in this video. So let's get started and let's say that we want to install a font. That's probably the most common thing that you'll want to do. And a lot of fonts you can just get from your package manager. Like for example, if I wanted to get Noto fonts, which is a very popular font library, which has a bunch of Google fonts, then you can just install this from your package manager. So I can just run something like this and install it from my package manager. That is very easy. But what if there is some font that you want to install that is not in your package manager? Like let's say that I'm getting a random font from some random website like this. That is something you might want to do because this font is pretty cool. But let's say that you go to one of these random websites and you download a font zip file and you get this file. In our case, we have this TTF file, Andy Bold, right here that we want to install. And so how can we install this? Well, it's actually very simple. All that you need to do is move this, let's say in your file manager, to this folder in your home folder. It's going to be under .local slash share and then this folder down here called fonts. And if this doesn't already exist, then you may need to create it, but it probably is there by default. And then you would just paste it in here. And that is literally it, it is now installed. Now you can clean this up a little bit, like you can make a folder here for it. Now there's an Andy folder, we can put this in here. And to be honest, you can organize this folder however you want. So I have each of these fonts in their own directory, but you can just leave them laying wherever. I actually had to clean up my fonts directory a little bit before I recorded this, so I wouldn't look like too much of a slob, but you can really organize these however you want. And that is literally it. So now we can open up something like GIMP and see if this actually works. So just open up a graphical program and test it out. And if we try to select Andy from the font selection right here, we now have Andy and we can say something like, hello world, in our beautiful new font. That looks great, and that is literally it for installing fonts. That should work most of the time, but for some reason, if your font didn't update, then you can run a command like fc-cache, and you can pass in the dash f flag. This is basically to force clear your cache. This is basically just force clearing your cache, just in case for some reason it's not updating. But most of the time, you will not need to do this, just if for some reason you can't get the font to work this may be what you need to run. And of course, if you want to uninstall this font, then it is as simple as just deleting it from this folder and the font is now uninstalled. But this is not the only location that you can install fonts to. So as you can see, this is in my home directory. So this is going to be for this specific user. But what if you want to install a font system wide? Like some people have more than one user and if you log in as a different user, then you're not going to be able to use this font. And so what we can do instead is we can move this to another folder and it's going to be, well, let's CD there. It's going to be under slash user local share fonts. And we can hit enter here and we can see all of the fonts here. So I just have a few fonts here that I put in here, but by default, this will probably be empty as well. So you may need to create this directory if it doesn't exist already, but we can also just move in files here so in order to install a font here, all you need to do is go to the folder where your Andy font is, and you can run the move command and say sudo mv Andy bold to this location right here. And the only difference here is you need to use sudo to move it, but we can do that, and it will now be installed in this location right here. And if we go here and check this out, Andy bold is now here. So if you install fonts here, then every user can now use them instead of just one user. But there is one more location that we can install fonts to, and it's going to be slash user slash share slash fonts. But you probably don't want to touch this directory directly. So this is going to be where your package manager installs all of the fonts. So like I said, I installed Noto fonts through my package manager. And so this is here. 
But when you're manually installing fonts, you probably don't want to put them here. You want to put them in the other two directories that I mentioned. And one last thing, there used to be a dot fonts folder in your home directory, and that's where you would install fonts to, but that is now depreciated. It may still work, but it's no longer recommended to do that because it is depreciated. Now that's all well and good if you're using your fonts in a graphical program like GIMP, but what if you want to change the configuration on say your terminal emulator? So on this terminal, which is Alacrity, I configure my options through this text file right here. And so if I put in the font right here, it's asking me for the exact name of this font is you can run FC dash list. And this will get a giant list of every single font that is installed on your computer right now. That is probably way more information than we actually need. So we can use grep to find a specific font. And let's say that we want to change the font to, let's say SF mono. So I'm going to grep SF right here. But this is still giving me a lot of information per font. This is a little bit much. So what you can do is you can only show the name of this by putting after FC list colon family run this and now we have the name of this and so both of these will work right here sf mono nerd font mono or just sf mono and so we can copy one of these and let's go back to our alacrity and we can paste this in save this and the font will change that is what we wanted and finally if you want to get all of the different styles like if you want to see what kind of styles like bold or italic they have you can also run this FC list command again by put in style and this will give you a list of all the styles that are installed for this specific font so we have regular italic semi bold medium etc etc so now we know how we have a heavy option and now if we really want to we can come in here and change the style to heavy and that is extremely heavy so I'll probably change that back but that is something you may want to see and so this FC list command is very useful if you want to see the path to the file, you can run file and this will just give you where it is stored. So these are in my user share fonts Apple directory, which was just installed by my package manager. Just in case you're curious where those are stored. But what if we want to change our default font? So the default system font is used for a lot of different things. And so the default font will be used in maybe some programs like this like this DevTools is used in the default monospace font and some websites across the internet will use the default sans serif font or the default serif font in order to display web pages and so if you want to change the default font well first we should actually see what the default font is and we can do that by going to sudo edit slash etsy slash fonts slash local dot conf and so if we edit this file we can see that this has all the default fonts in here for a sans serif for serif and for monospace. It is just using the default Noto fonts for all of these. And this is just a document written in XML, but it should be pretty self-explanatory what it's doing. It's setting this as an alias, this sans serif, and it's telling it for this sans serif alias to prefer to use these families right here. And the reason why it has multiple fonts listed here is because first off it's going to use Noto sans, but some characters aren't going to be in Noto Sans. So Noto Sans only has Latin characters, I believe. And so emojis and other things like that are not going to be included. That's why it has these emojis under here. These are kind of the fallback fonts. If the character isn't found in the first font, then it will go looking in the second font, third font, and etc. So I just have these in here in order to display emojis properly. And as you can imagine, we have the same thing going for serif and monospace. But let's say that we want to change this. And the way that we can change this is we can actually copy this. So you'll want to copy something like this. And then we want to create a new file in our home directory under .config slash font config. And the file is going to be called fonts.conf. Again, you will probably need to create this directory because I don't think it exists by default. But let's go into here and we're going to want to paste something in here. And so you need to format it like this with the whole XML wrapper here. And I'll probably leave a link to a snippet in the description in case you don't want to manually write all this out. But what we're doing here is we're setting the monospace default font and we're setting it to JetBrains mono nerd font. But we can change this to whatever we want. And you know what? I'm going to do something diabolical here. 
and change this to Comic Sans MS. That way we can really see if it's working. And so this is basically just saying if we're looking for the default monospace font, prefer to use this one first and foremost. So let's open up a web browser here and pop open the dev tools and see if this actually did anything. So let's open up the dev tools here and see we now have everything in Comic Sans that is glorious. Probably not the best choice for your monospace font, but who am I to judge? And so every application that uses the default monospace font will default to this one instead. And of course, this won't affect everything on your system because not every application respects the default fonts. Maybe under some web browsers, if you go to the settings, you would have to change the fonts there. But this can be an easy way to change a lot of things across your system. And all you need to do is add this fonts.conf file right here. And of course, now that we have this set, we can also come into, let's say, our terminal and change the font family to monospace. And that will, as you can expect, change it to Comic Sans. But this is going to be a little bit too much, so let's just change it back to what we had before. Update this again, and we are now back to normal. That is good. And finally, one more thing that you might want to do is have a font preview like this, because this is not included by default. So what you can do from the command line is run display. And this will only work if you have Image Magic installed. So if you don't already, just install this with your package manager. That's Image Magic with a K. Well, let's run display and then Andy Bold. And this pops open a window right here that serves as a pretty good preview for the font. And that looks good. But if you want an even easier way to preview some fonts, you can install this program called Font Preview. So if you run this, then you get a giant list that you can kind of fuzzy find your way through. So we can type Andy here, hit enter, and we have this window pop open. And this is just a random script that I downloaded. You can find the GitHub right here. But if you're on Arch, you can install it with the AUR. But otherwise, you will probably have to build it from source. Not too difficult, but you just have to follow the instructions here. Link in the description. But you may prefer working with this. I find out the UI is a little bit nicer. So that is just one more option that you have if you want to preview your fonts. And with this program, you even get instructions down here how to integrate this with your file manager. That's why in my file manager, I have this. But that is getting out of the scope of this video. If you want to explore that more, you can. But this video is getting long enough. And that is all I really have to say on fonts. So hopefully you now have a better understanding about fonts on your system. And now you can go out and install any goofy font that you want. Enjoy.